So, uh, 24 hours has come up. We're on day one now. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look. And we're gonna see what is all the commotion. I don't see any traces of this island on Ernest's slog book. We're the first one. I hereby name it. Careful, the ground is cracking. And we proceed to get some loot. And now we're on to another island. And 24 hours, we'll have to see what we get. But anyway, in, in any case, you know, it's interesting. So basically we get like a little log as they go along. So Daybreak Island is coming up. We don't really quite yet know what, what we're expecting, but we are getting free loot out of it, so there's that. Uh, but I thought I'd go ahead and report on the, you know, the, the Daybreak Island dock here that, you know, we're still kind of having a bit of a mystery with. Now, something that I, I thought I'd discuss a little bit today was kind of the fact that now that the game has basically thrown a lot of people through a loop with the concept of enhancing your gear to legendary, you may be wondering, what do I do? What is my answer to this problem? And I will tell you that my, my personal opinion still, I think, holds up over time. You need to be saving your arena coins for the Mythic Hero Chests. Now, I don't know if there'll be a, an option, but I would imagine in the future we're probably going to start seeing things that make getting said Mythic Chests easier. <laughs> I just don't think it's as common right now. And maybe that'll never happen. I don't know. I'm just purely speculating at this point. But it kind of seems like that's the general direction it's going to be going in. That said, I do have my embassy leveling. I have not yet even started to try and upgrade these buildings yet up to Furnace level 5. Now that I've gotten my main up to five. And like I've been telling you guys, if you're early on, Gen 1 through 3, do not worry about a lot of that stuff just yet. But when you do unlock fire crystals, start stashing them every opportunity you get. Because it gets a heck of a lot more important later on. And then you really depend on them a lot more than you think you will. And then, you know, you, you all uh, basically need, like, somewhere north of 20,000 plus. Like, it is crazy how many crystals you need, I think, just in the long term. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, I did not. I was underprepared for how much I was going to actually need. And so, you know, just like anything, I, I, I point this out because it's, I, I just feel like a lot of people probably ought to probably learn from my mistake there. I really was not ready for that. But of course, you know, I've, I've actually, you know, finally got to a point where I've, you know, I feel like we can probably, if we wanted to, right, we're in hero development now. So here you can raise your widgets or your hero gear or your chief charm gear, you know, and basically do troop training. And the only other thing you can do is do pet advancement, hero gear and widgets and what have you, you know, but the only time where you'll ever actually like, how do you say, make use of your shards and stuff like that is during the second phase and since i didn't get lin until like the other phase it don't ever get into this habit of where you're like yes i have the stars now i need to fully use all of my stars don't do that okay just save them don't don't get in a habit of doing that because you can use it for the next sbs that's coming up so don't be that guy that's super wasteful like you're you're wasting <laughs> you're wasting a lot of extra rewards if you do that, by the way. Okay. But of course, you know, like every day, you know, make sure you're doing your Intel missions. Cause like anything, there's, there's so much good loot. I, I, you know, honestly, I might as well make this a tips video today. Right. One of the tips I would say is you, you always want to do your Intel missions. That's definitely my beginner tip for most players. You want to do these Intel missions and get your Intel level up as fast as possible because there is a stupid amount of loot in here. You might be wondering, how do I get all that stamina? Biggest key to that is get the VIP pass. If you're going to get anything in this game, get the VIP pass because that's going to give you the stamina you're going to need to basically go and hit monsters, which is ultimately going to pay dividends over in the long term, especially if you plan to get, play this game for several months at a time. I did have some people ask me, and this is kind of a second tip, but it's, it's more of, you know, how do you go about amounting to like what you upgrade and how do you know what buildings to upgrade when, like, for example, do you rush your furnace level or do you, you know, play it slow, like upgrade your resource buildings and then go about it that way? My answer to this is always going to be that if you rush 
your furnace, you're ultimately going to get the benefits that come with that higher for level. But as you do that, you're also going to encourage the cost to be exponentially high. Meaning that if you don't have the resources, you will find yourself getting slowed down by that pretty, pretty early on. The one thing that I would recommend you do is actually pay very close attention to your embassy. A lot of people will actually just rush their furnace and then not pay attention to their embassy. The problem with that, though, is you're actually getting a lot of LA assists and help time that way. And it's a lot of extra speed ups and such that you could have been using. I, I There is obviously the habit of people that what they like to do is they upgrade everything right away. And honestly, I was one of those guys that when I got into the game day one, I max leveled everything so quickly that I, by the time like Call of Chiefs came around, I actually found myself unable to participate in the event because I literally did it when I could have been doing it during the event. So my, my, my second big tip for a lot of the beginner players is don't get in a rush. I, if anything, pace yourself, uh, pick a building, upgrade it, and just kind of rotate. I mean, if anything, uh, the biggest tip that I can give you is, is make sure you go down here and change your foods to fancy meals and make sure you go inside your furnace and turn on max power and then never run low on coal. So make sure you're gathering for coal, all four or five resources a day. So don't just like send out five gatherers for one resource, unless you've got like maybe a bunch of halts or something like that, maybe. But like you want to make sure you've got at least one gatherer for every resource type. And the reason for this is because if you do it that way, you're actually getting all of the extra like in here, you're going to get your daily missions. The point is, is you want to get to the very end of this as much as possible. And the only way I know to do that is you go out and you can mass gather each resource, at least one of each resource a day, and you're going to fulfill those missions. You know, so it, it's kind of, it'd be kind of silly not to do that, you know? Uh, of course, you know, you can also send out, like, a rally, like I do. I'll just go ahead and send a rally and set it and forget it, basically, because you'll have, you know, the reason why you can set it and forget it, by the way. And I, I did, you know, kind of briefly touch on this, but you can hit on auto-join and just auto-join rallies, and that works really, really well. So that kind of goes into the third tip is you want to make sure that you're auto joining rallies every day. Uh, of course, when you actually do get through the expedition levels and go through exploration, you always want to make sure you're claiming this every day. Obviously, you will eventually run into a, a point where you won't be able to go any further. If you're wondering how do you go farther, it's partly generation and also partly hero gear, and it's it's a lot more complicated than it used to be now that we actually have more than just, you know, the mastery forgery level to deal with, but we also now have to deal with also the aspect of it even enhancing the gear. So there's now more than one thing you have to kind of pay attention to. I would say the fifth tip, if anything, is making sure that you kind of build up a stash of your gems. A lot of people love to spend all of their gems, but the only two times you really ever should be spending gems in this game is either on your VIP, which is reasonable, but I still don't think, if you're gonna pay and spend on a regular basis, you'll naturally progress your VIP level fairly quickly. And so therefore it doesn't make as much sense. But the only time where I've ever genuinely felt like the gem cost to what you get ratio is worth it is Lucky Wheel. Like when you spend your gems in Lucky Wheel, this is the one time you're actually going to get a pretty good payout for the gems that you're using because you're basically getting medals back for the hero, which is better than having spent the money for the shards for that particular hero by, by and large. So saving your gems is a big thing. Using them for Lucky Wheel is a big thing. Of course, every day, making sure you grab your extra stam that you'll get for the storehouse. Of course, with the chief house, the rotation is really relatively simple. Just make sure you do productivity day, do urgent mobilization, then rush job, and then after a period of like an hour or two, then run festivities. And that's that's the cycle that you run through. Um, of course, every time you ever do a building upgrade or anything like that, make sure you tap double time inside the chief's house because that's going to give you a construction boost. And then if you also have the pet, make sure you pop Builder's Aid for that extra 10%. And that's going to give you a lot more um, in terms of construction speed. Now, as far as the you know sixth tip, it, this is kind of just a generic focus. But like, make sure that if you do decide to get Zen Man, make sure you get Zen Man's uh, expedition skills. These two are the only two skills you need. Everything else is not really that important with Zen Man. 
You might be wondering, well, should I do Molly? You can do Molly, and she's the easiest one to do, but I wouldn't spend any shards using her. Like, I would not try to use your uh, mythic shards on her, because you should be able to acquire those naturally just by playing the game uh, without really too much trouble at all. Uh, other than that, that's really about all I can give you for tips playing Why Not Survival for today, but if anything, there's one thing I will say that you can do that will make a difference is a lot of people once in a while will wonder how come their populace is always constantly complaining. They're always going to complain. It's it's one of those things that I honestly, it's kind of like one of those, I don't know why they kind of ignored this feature after a certain point, but it is actually kind of hilarious because you'll always go in here and there's always going to be somebody complaining. It's like, okay, you know what? You know, there's always this one guy who's like, this guy's slacking off. And it's like, dude, we have millions of food. All of your shelters are upgraded. Why are you mad? You know, it's just like, I don't know. The, the commentary with these guys is kind of funny. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. But of course, with the note of Gen 8 heroes coming up, you know, again, that's going to be kind of interesting. We're we're not even at Gen 5 yet, and they've got Gen 8. Oh, look at that. Ugh. It's kind of, kind of fierce looking, of course, but... Again, more stuff to look down the pipeline. But again, you know, thank you guys for watching. And if you have any other tips that you would like to share, feel free to let them all know down in the comment section below. And I'll see you, I'll see you guys.